Welcome back to Just Chatting, and these are the videos we do on Thursday and Sunday evenings just for entertainment. And this week we're going to take a look at Where's Lilibet? And it's something like Where's Waldo? Except that we know Waldo's in the picture somewhere. Even if we can't find him, we know he's there. Can't say the same about Lilibet. Now, before we get started, I wanted to share some things that I got from a couple of our viewers. And first of all, here is uh, two retro spice shakers. One of our viewers was at an antique shop, went over to the salt and pepper shaker, and in the midst of all the salt and pepper shakers, she simply found these two side by side, uh, nutmeg and ginger. These are, as I said, retro. They're not antiques. Um, they're not vintage. They are, as the viewer who sent the picture pointed out, simply pretending to be something they're not. So, sound familiar? Next is a link, and I have this below the video in the video notes. If the link does not come up for you, just go to the YouTube search engine, because this video is on YouTube, and type in Megan Men's Health, and you'll get the video. Uh, I like to call this slutty grilling, and I don't know what it has to do with men's health, except it's possibly um, an alternative, chemical-free uh, alternative to Viagra. In which case, good for her, she might actually be saving lives. And for our friends in the UK and the Commonwealth countries, my sympathies, because that's your princess. Gotta wonder what would have happened if the royal family had seen that before the wedding, huh? All right, we're going to take a quick break for our intro, and then we'll come back and get started. <laughs> In order to have the proper context for discussing Lilibet today, I think we need to cast back a couple of years and take a look at the Sussex's pregnancy history as a whole, um, because that sets the stage for what we're dealing with now. So let's go back to uh, October 14th, 2018, and this is when Nutmeg uh, announced, so to speak, her pregnancy. Yeah, it was at Eugenie's wedding and she showed up in maternity clothes, but since maternity clothes were not enough, she shows up in a coat with the two top buttons closed and the remaining buttons open, thereby suggesting that she was simply so great with the child she couldn't close the coat over her enormous pregnant belly. Just so you understand how enormous that pregnant belly would have been. She was 10 weeks pregnant at that time, and a 10-week-old fetus is about an inch long and weighs about a quarter of an ounce. I would say, yeah, you could even button your skinny jeans over something like that. No problem. Also, here's another picture. Let's just take a look at this. Uh, no one else is wearing a coat. In fact, Edward's wife, Sophie, is wearing a short sleeve dress. So when you look at this globally, you can see it was all about creating an impression of great with child. And that continued uh, throughout the pregnancy. In fact, I did a video saying that I was pretty sure she was patting her belly throughout this pregnancy. Who knows why? Uh, my best guess is that coming from that, that whole Hollywood mindset, she was under the impression that if you don't look like you're about to give birth to a walrus, people don't think you're pregnant because Hollywood is very over the top with this sort of thing. But regardless, let's take a look at a picture from January 2014. 
Uh, this was a trip to Birkenhead, and at this time, she told the press she was six months pregnant, leading them to conclude that the due date was sometime in April. Uh, no, the due date was a month later, and she had messed up by at least three weeks. That's hard to explain, because in this day and age, with early pregnancy detection and sonograms and so on, people know how far along they are. But I'm, nutmeg just never tells the truth if a lie will do. So we can write off a little of this to her chronic need to deceive people. Who knows why she would have done that. Now, the people who believe that she used surrogates have said that she wouldn't have known exactly how far along the mother was. She could have been confused herself. Yeah, I'll buy that. On the other hand, I am not convinced that she used surrogates. I'm not dismissing it out of hand, but I'm not convinced. I, I, there's not enough evidence to win me over to that cause, not yet anyway. I do believe, as I said, that she was enhancing the pregnant belly. Then when Archie was born, uh, the birth wasn't announced right away. Uh, they, the, at the hospital was kept secret. Uh, they, they said all kinds of things about fear of the paparazzi, but and this is a couple that thrives on publicity. So when they do something to discourage publicity, I have to think there's a good chance they're up to something. There's a lot of controversy about the non-standard birth announcement, the birth certificate being changed, so on and so forth. Shortly thereafter, of course, they fled the UK because they were going to live in the Commonwealth, right? Yeah, I know. Commonwealth, Los Angeles, how do we work this out? But they fled to the Commonwealth, which apparently is Los Angeles. And then we had a pandemic. Everyone was in lockdown. Um, they still managed to get out. They still managed um, to do all their little photo op stuff. And then we started seeing a few pictures of Archie, including this one. And again, I've done a video on this. I am telling you that in my opinion, as a doll expert, that's a doll. So the next time we hear from them is November 25th of 2020. And this is when Nutmeg writes a piece for the New York Times talking about a miscarriage she allegedly had in July of 2020. However, I have seen absolutely nothing, not even a shred of evidence to indicate there was ever a miscarriage or even a pregnancy in the first place. Nothing. No, no objective evidence of this at all. Ordinarily, when a high-profile person has a miscarriage, there is some evidence. In other words, they may have announced the pregnancy, and then, of course, the pregnancy ceases to be, so we can put two and two together and come up with four. In this case, there was no pregnancy announcement before July 2020. Um, there were... Uh, there were no press reports from an emergency hospital admission, nothing like that. And in a place like Hollywood, where the press haunt the hospitals and pay attention to uh, the announcements on the police radio, it just seems odd to me. And it also strikes me as odd that no one else is questioning this. At least I haven't heard anybody question this. People are just sort of taking it for granted. She had a miscarriage. Why? Because she said so? Sorry, not good enough for me. Uh, I don't know what did or did not happen. 
uh, the fact that whatever may or may not have happened was announced publicly in a publicity stunt through the New York Times four months later, that alone is sufficient to lead me to question the validity of the story. And by the way, November 25th, 2020, she would have been almost three months pregnant with Lilibet. And nowhere in this miscarriage drama that she published in the Times was there any mention of that pregnancy. So that too makes me a little suspicious. All right, fast forward. February 14th, Valentine's Day, she announces her pregnancy with pictures. And at this point, she's about, what, five months pregnant? Yeah, about five months pregnant. And we have these pictures, and here's a picture of Nutmeg and Harry and something that is allegedly Archie. You can see a foot. But we have no way of knowing who that child is. Is it their child? Is it a professional model the photographer brought along? Is it the housekeeper's granddaughter? No way of knowing. And because she has used dolls in the past, I am suspicious. Um, there were two pictures taken. Interestingly enough, she changed clothing, although Harry didn't. I'm not sure what that's all about. And then we hear nothing until June. And then in June, we hear that she has had the baby and eventually this birth certificate starts circulating. Now, I find it extremely suspicious uh, for a lot of reasons, not the least of which is that, as you know, because we did a video about this, California law requires that the father's name be listed as it is listed on the rest of his identification. And in this case, the father's name is listed as the Duke of Sussex, his Royal Highness. That makes it a suspicious document in my mind. So, then nothing. And they were in New York recently. Here's a picture. I thought I'd share this one with you. Uh, because a lot of people were saying nutmeg looked fat. Maybe that's post baby weight. No, she just looks like an unmade bed. She doesn't look fat. She looks dumpy because she doesn't wear the right clothes. And please note this close up. She is walking on her pants. Her pants are dragging on the floor. I'm surprised she didn't trip and fall, especially since she seems to be wearing those favorite beige spiked heels of hers that, uh, I don't know, she's in love with those shoes. I don't think they do much for her, but what can I say? The fact is, she went to New York looking like an unmade bed. Um, was she fat? Had she gained weight? I don't think so. I think it, she just had a generally rumpled and disheveled appearance, but I'm used to that from her. And she doesn't wear clothes that look good on her. She doesn't wear clothes that flatter her body. So she probably did wear a lot of things that made her look fat. Was she really fat? I don't think so. In the pictures that I've seen showing her arms and legs, She's still as skinny as ever, as far as I can tell. What surprised me about the New York trip is why weren't people asking about the baby? You know, no one's seen the child. The child just disappeared off the face of the earth. So in order to really understand this, I think what we need to do is move nutmeg to the side for a while, and we're going to do it gently. Suppose we were talking about an ordinary person. Um, let's say we work with someone, uh, and we'll call her Sally. And Sally works on another floor in another department. We know her by sight, but we're not friends. But we know that 
she had a previous pregnancy in which she began wearing maternity clothes long before she was showing. We believe she was patting her pregnant belly. There was a lot of mystery involved in the birth of the other child. And later we see her in the parking garage with a doll pretending it's a real baby. Now, okay, pull aside. At that point, of course, we are responsible people. We are going to make a quick call to Human Resources suggesting somebody let Sally know that the company has mental health care as part of the health benefits. Yeah. Um, because at that point, we would be wondering about her mental stability. What if this same Sally alleged that she had a miscarriage and apparently at the time of the miscarriage it was such a private matter that she didn't want to discuss it with anyone yet four months later she throws it all over the front pages of a newspaper and it turns out that she would have been you know two or three months pregnant when she did that but left that off the table and then again baby in secret no one seen the baby and four months have gone by. What would we think? Now, I don't know about you, but I would question everything about it. I would not need to know that Sally was, uh, Sally had been caught in many lies. Let's just put it that way. Recollections vary. I wouldn't need that. It would just be the documented history of her past pregnancies. That's all it would take for me to question whether or not this next baby actually exists. So I'm not sure why more people are not throwing that same question out. Not where's Lilibet, but is there a Lilibet to be somewhere in the first place. At this point, if Nutmeg produced a baby, I don't know if I would actually believe it was her child. Now, ordinarily, if someone says, here, look, this is my kid, you don't doubt them. But they don't have the same history. They do not have, uh, they do not have a background of publicity seeking, uh, attention seeking, of sympathy seeking. They do not have a background of, uh, well, deceit, frankly, to the extent that Nutmeg has. Would I believe her? The answer is no. Uh, absolutely not. And the reason this becomes important, and I've said this before, because people occasionally say, well, who cares? Now, mind you, not a lot of people, because most people understand that there is a legitimate reason for concern. That reason for concern is this is a child with a place in the British line of succession. Does it matter to me as an American? No, of course not. I'm not British. I don't ever intend to be British. No offense to you folks, I'm just happy where I am. I will not have to support this child with my tax dollars. The British public might. This is a child who could become eligible for uh, payments from the civil list. And if that child does not have a right to those payments, the British people have uh, the right to know that. If the child does have a right, the British people, again, have a right to know that. Ultimately, from my perspective, it comes down to the dollars and cents. So even if people say, well, eighth in line, how likely is she to ever sit on the throne? I'm not going to argue about how many times in British history unlikely people have sat on the throne before. I'll set that aside. It's just the legitimate financial interests of the British public. 
they could end up supporting her. And who knows who this child would be. With the Cambridge children, it's very different because the whole world has been able to follow them through pictures and public appearances and whatever else. And fortunately, William and Catherine have been very generous in showing pictures of their children, beautiful little children. Everybody smiles when they see those darling babies. No one is going to be able to pull a fast one on the British people and hand them, you know, well, a cuckoo in the nest. They know who these children are. And you can see them through the history of their photographs. We watch them grow up. We know them. There is no controversy. There is no mystery. And I think that Nutmeg, with her weird desire to shield her children from publicity, and I say it's a weird desire because, on the one hand, she doesn't want anybody to take pictures of her kids, but she herself releases the pictures of their little fingers and toes and whatever when she pleases. So it's really a question of she wants a one-way street. She wants to be able to share only that which she wants to share without any regard to the public's legitimate right to know. So, in conclusion, what are we going to take away from this? I'm no longer looking for Lilibet. I think even if Nutmeg had a baby in June, it was a girl, she named it Lilibet. I wouldn't believe it if you threw it in front of my face now. And the reason I wouldn't is she's hoisted by her own petard. She has created so much mystery around this child that I no longer accept anything that is coming from her. I do not accept her word for the fact that she had a child. I do not accept her word for uh, the fact that whatever child she may eventually haul out in front of us is, in fact, that child. Far as I'm concerned, she's blown it. Um, so, I'm not looking for Lilibet anymore. I think I have answered the question, at least to my own satisfaction, that it just doesn't matter. Maybe there is a Lilibet, maybe there isn't. But, even with a DNA test at this point, I would not be satisfied that this was a child of ginger and nutmeg, legitimately born of nutmeg, as British law requires for a place in the succession. I wouldn't buy it because there is simply no evidence to support this. So, when we get together again, on Sunday, we are going to take a look at more Nutmeg from our Nutmeg magazine. Um, and I have been reading it, by the way, and I really do think that these people have their tongue firmly planted in their cheeks. So we should be able to have a good time with that. Giveaways. Holiday giveaways are going on. The giveaways are simply my way of thanking our viewers and our subscribers. Um, goodness, I wish I could just send everybody a holiday present, but that's not feasible. So we're doing it through the Facebook group. This is Sumi's Angels on Facebook. Let me show you the ladies taking care of it. These are our angels, Colleen, Lisa, Karen, and Steph. They are organizing the giveaways. They are doing a fantastic job. I believe we've gotten 10 giveaway prizes out so far. Uh, we hope to do at least 50 of them before the end of the year. So, check it out. 
and I will see you all. Um, I will see you all this weekend for the thrifting videos, and I will see you Sunday night for more Just Chatting. <laughs>